Hi everyone, we're going to start with our first algorithm in classification, which is one of the simplest, but I love it because it's really easy to understand and it's going to provide us a lot of intuition about classification itself. So remember that classification is supervised, meaning that we have a data set in which we have some labeled data that are the classes in our data set. In this example here, we have four classes in different colors. So let's, let's get started. So imagine that we have a new observation that we want to classify. In this case, we have this red star, and we want to know to which class this, this belongs. In this case, we are going to use k equals 1, meaning that we are going to find the closest one, the nearest neighbor in this diagram, according to some distance. Here is the Euclid distance. And in this case, the, the closest one is uh, this orange spot. So we're going to classify this star as orange. Okay, so far so good. Now let's imagine that k equals 3. In this case, we're going to find the three closest ones. And maybe sometimes we have to do some choice, some decision. In this case, we are going to apply the majority rule. And here's the majority, actually, all of them are orange. So according to this majority rule, this star is going to be orange as well. Again, let's go back to k equals 1. In this case, again, the closest is this one. So now this observation is going to be orange. But if we change the k, for instance, k equals 3, now the closest one is this one, but, but the three closest one, the three nearest neighbors, are two blue and one orange. So in this case, changing the k is going to change the classification. And, and this is central in this k and n algorithm. Okay? But you get the idea. What if k equals 10? Okay, in this case, if the new observation is around here, the 10 closest one are going to be uh, two, four, seven uh, purple, and maybe one green and one blue, and maybe one orange, but again, the majority rule is going to tell us that the star is going to be purple. But what if k is large? Um, um, in, in extreme case, large I mean an infinite value. Then the, all of, this, of the points are going to be nearest neighbors, and in this case, the classification would give us an orange one. And this is kind of weird. So as you can see, taking k equals 1 is very noisy because they're going to take all into account, like in this case, all into account the closest one, and if k equals infinity, we're going to take all of them. Here you can see a simple example. We have two classes, yes and no. And as you can see, if k equals 5, the result is going to be really noisy. You have these islands here of misclassified cases. And if we increase k, for instance, k equals 40, we have something like this, which is a smoother. And if k equals 100, we're going to have this, I, I would say, a smoother line. Maybe too much, because sometimes we have to find the trade-off between being too precise and being too noisy. So, what are the pros of K and N? So the first one is simplicity, of course. The idea is pretty simple, as you have seen in this video, and it just have one hyperparameter. In this case, uh, think of K as fitting different models. So if I change the K, it's like a different model. That's called a hyperparameter. But we have just one of them. The second one is that we have none, any assumptions. So this uh, what we they call a non-parametric model in the sense that we are not assuming that the data is Gaussianly distributed or something like that. So the only assumption is that we have a choice for the distance. The next thing that I love about KNN is that we don't have any training step. So you simply include new data and you are tagging as yes, no, or blue, orange, or whatever. Okay, so this is very simple. It's, uh, it's evolving. So new observations mean that you change the location of the boundary, but it changes slowly. So I like it, that a lot. It's easy to implement, even for the multi-class models, because actually our example with the colors is a multi-class model. It's not just a binary one. And it can be used for both classification and regression. So we've used it here for categorical values, but we could use for numerical values. But the cons are, it's a slow, and this is called the curse of dimensionality. Because you have to compute wh which are the nearest neighbors. And imagine that you have a thousand data points so, and you add a new observation. So first you have to measure the distance between one and the other thousand. And then you have to decide which are the k closest one. So this is not very fast, actually. The next thing that is not very good for k and n is that if you use numerical features, not categorical ones, then you have to normalize all the data. Otherwise, the distance that you're using is going to overweight those features that are like higher. For instance, imagine that you're putting in the same category the, the height and the weight of a person. And the height is measured in meters. So a uh, normal male is like 180 meters and the weight is 80 kilograms. So that 80 is going to weight uh, much more than 180. So you have to pre 
pre-classify that data. It's not clear which is the optimal value of k, so you have to try a lot of them and then use confusion matrices in order to decide which is the best choice. KNN doesn't perform well on an imbalanced data. In our example, for instance, the orange is over overrepresented with respect to, uh, to purple, for instance, so you, that is going to produce some misclassification as well. And KNN is very sensitive to outliers, so the problem with distance is that if you are classifying new things and you have something which is far apart from the other observations, that is going to change the, the classification. So the way in which you split in training and validation subsets, your data set is going to affect a lot. Finally, you don't know what to do with, with NAs, with non-available data sets. So basically, you, what you have to do is remove all from your observations and probably you're going to lose a lot of data. But you can solve that using KNN. So one problem with NAs is that you don't know what to do with that, but you can actually use KNN to do what we call class imputation. So imagine that you have a data set in which you don't know what to put here, you know the race of this observation. What you can do here is, this is X2, sorry. Imagine that you know that this is male, so you're going to plug this line around here. And now the good thing is that according to this line, you're going to see which are the closest to the line. In this case, one green and let's say three oranges. And then you're going to take the majority rule again. So in this case, you see that orange is the majority to this line. And then you're going to take the, let's say, the centroid of this category. In this case, the center is going to be around here. And then you're going to do an imputation for this set. So you're going to say that the missing value, the x2 missing value here is going to be this black spot. And this is really cool. And that's all for today.